Hey everybody, so today we're comparing a 1966 Fender Reverb Tank versus the Eventide Space. How close can digital come to an analog classic? So today we're going to be hearing my 1966 Fender Reverb Tank and we're going to be trying to get the same sound out of a Eventide Space, a jack of all trades, amazing digital reverb pedal. So the guitar I'll be using throughout this video is this beautiful USA Strat. And for you cork snippers out there, I got rid of the noiseless version 2 and replaced them with a Zodic 1960s single coil set. Yay! The amp I'll be using is a orange TH30 with a orange cabinet with vintage 30 Celestians. Let's get into the first sound, a huge, super wet, drippy spring reverb sound. These settings are from Dick Dale's rig that someone took a picture of and I copied them. Let's see how close the space eventide can get. Spring reverb. <laughs> eventide. Spring reverb. <laughs> Space. Okay, so let's hear what this Dick Dale super wet reverb sounds like in a band type mix with bass and drums added. So I got Steve Aoki's drummer and some basses from the Deftones. Let's get to it. Spring reverb. <laughs> Space. Okay, so let's go over the controls on the Fender Reverb, and these are the parameters that I just had for the Dick Dale type sound that came from his uh, unit someone online had a picture of. So the dwell for that sound was set on 4, and what the dwell does is that controls the amount of guitar signal going into the spring tank. The mixer controls the ratio between the dry sound and the wet uh, reverb sound, and the tone is just that. It controls the overall tone of the sound, and this is where you get your treble frequency response, which for me is what sets these kind of spring units apart from anything else, the treble response. So let's go over the controls on the Eventide Space, and these are also the controls that I just used to approximate the Dick Dale sound. So the mix, obviously, it's the verb mix ratio between dry and the reverb signal and on this one it was set to 70. The decay I am not changing for all these examples and I approximated the decay of the spring tank over there at 3.79 seconds around there. The size, it's not size, it's the tension, the spring tension and for this example it was like at 55 somewhere around there. The delay, it's not delay, it's the number of springs. So this Fender Reverb tank, it has two springs on it, and to get around that type sound on this unit, it was uh, 2.5 springs, whatever that means in the digital world. So the low, that's the low dampening, how much of the low frequencies are kind of dampened and cut off. 
And like I was saying with the reverb tank, the treble response is something that kind of sets it apart from the digital units or from a lot of other type of reverb. So I have the low dampening pretty high at 90. And the high dampening, it's at zero. So there's no dampening of the high frequencies. The contour, it is the resonance, and that sort of manual says it's the amount of metallic type sound. Uh, it has to do with the high frequencies feeding into that. So that's at 100 on this particular example. And the rest of these knobs have, have to do with a added tremolo, tremolo effect you can get with this algorithm, and it's all off. I don't have any of that going. Okay, so the next tone I want to show you is this cool kind of sitar type tone you can get by maxing out some of the controls over here on the Fender Reverb Tank. And I wasn't able to get quite the same sound out of the reverb space, so I had to add in a tube driver to get that tube sound, because there are tubes in this reverb tank that I think add to the strength of this particular tone and possibly overall to the tone of the unit. So first let's hear what the reverb tank sounds like, and then I'll show you how close I came with the space with and without the tube driver. Spring reverb. <laughs> Only the space. But if I add the tube driver, it's a little closer. Reverb tank. Space with the tube driver. Spring tank. Space with the tube driver. Spring tank. Space with the tube driver. Okay, so for the sitar sound, I maxed out the dwell, the amount of guitar signal going into the springs. That's why it's so drippy. The mixer is set at 7, and the tone is set at 10. So the closest I could get for the sitar sound on the space, I had to push up the mix a bit. The mix was at 80. Decay stayed the same. Size, the spring tension, was up a bit to 65. I had to say that there's three digital springs in this spring tank. Three digital springs, okay, whatever that means. The low, to try to crank out as much treble response as I could, I put the low dampening at 100. And the high, the high dampening was still at zero, and the resonance uh, was up to 100. And like I said before, these, control, these ones control a, a optional tremolo, and that's not being used. So like I said, I had to put a tube driver on this to try to get the sitar effect and my reasoning was there are tubes in the fender reverb and since the mixer and dwell are up higher i think we're hearing more of the tube sound and there's obviously a tube in this tube driver and i also used it to boost the highs here so the lows are kind of cut the highs are up almost all the way i maxed out the output level to help with the output because the spring tank has a higher output there's a, there's an output transformer in the tubes that makes it hotter and I didn't want too much of a drive type sound, so the tube drive is fairly low. But I think it, it's a rough approximation, not too close, but pretty close, I guess. Let me give you a brief history of the spring reverb sound. All right. So it started actually in Hammond organs from the 30s and 40s, and the effect was so unique and popular that Hammond soon started licensing out their reverb tanks to other manufacturers. One of the first to pick up on this was Fender, of course. And in 1961, Fender came out with their standalone spring reverb tank. And later, they started putting reverb in their amplifiers, starting with the twin reverb in 1962. Okay, so why are these spring reverb tanks so cool? Why are they so desirable? Well, there's a couple reasons. One is the high-end response. The metallic, high-end nature of the sound is very unique, and it's hard to replicate digitally. Also, that's where you get the drip sound that you hear, especially with the Dick Dale surf-type tone. 
Also, these units are tube-powered, so there's a creaminess and warmth that's added to the tone because there's more tubes in the mix. More tube, more tone, baby. Also, these vintage units are old, and thus, when they heat up, they smell great. And also, who could forget the awesome reverb thunder type sound that you get when you shake a reverb amp? Come on, baby. Come on, Digital Springs. Can't get that with digital. So the next tone I want to show you is sort of just like an all-around spring reverb, not crazy wet. Reverb tank. Space. Spring tank. Space. Reverb tank. Space. Reverb tank. Space. Reverb tank. Space. Okay, so let's hear what this more subdued, kind of all-around spring reverb sound sounds like with my band. Uh, are you guys ready to go over there? Hey man, where's our money? Huh. Hey, I told you to cash those checks next week, alright? Let's just play. Reverb tank. So for a nice usable spring sound, I got the dwell at 4.5, the mixer at 4, and the tone at 6. So for this moderate spring sound on the space, I have the verb mix set around 35, the decay stayed the same. The spring tension uh, is at 50, and this time we have one spring, one digital spring, everybody. The low dampening, I brought back a bit to 80. The high dampening, I brought back to 10, and the resonance is at 90. So that's it. What do you guys think? How did you think the Eventide Space did versus the analog classic spring reverb tank? I think if you really know what the spring tank is supposed to sound like, the Eventide isn't close. For me, the attack is almost there, but where the Eventide Space really lacks is in the trails. You hear sort of like a metallic, like digital type sound, and I believe that's the algorithm trying to compensate and approximate that drip type decay sound that you only get from the real springs. Also one advantage that the spring tank has is it has tubes and output transformers, more power transformers, that really adds to a warm creamy type sound as well as a slight clipping and added output gain that the Eventide Space, I just couldn't get it to do. So what do you guys think about this? What did you hear? What do you prefer? Personally, I am going to go with the analog. Of course, the digital, it's easy to carry. You get a million effects in that space box down there. But in this digital age we're living in where everything is ones and zeros and everything is trying to be on a computer chip, I prefer the good old analog. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And feel free to hit me up at shredpro411 at gmail.com. So this is John signing off, and we'll see you down that dusty trail.